Welcome back. Today we are talking about the value of setting up your own home lab. And it doesn't need to be hard, and it doesn't need to be overly complicated, and you can do it on a very, 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 very small budget. In fact, you can do a home lab on no money at all. As long as you've got yourself a, a laptop that you're that you can work on, then you can you can do a home lab. What is a home lab? Now it might sound really obvious, but the, the purpose of a home lab is that you've got an environment, a networking environment set up in your house or wherever your lab, and you are conducting activities and practicing and setting up a unique uh, situation for you to practice your cyber skills. Home labs are super important because we can also, we can create an environment that uh, duplicates or reflects a real world scenario that we couldn't just normally have access to. So like we couldn't just go to a, a business site and then just launch ransomware. I mean, you could, but that's wrong. But you see, you kind of see what I'm saying is that we've got a situation like ransomware that is running. How do we naturally see it in, in, a, in, a, in a controlled environment? We can do that in a home lab environment. Maybe you're going through to go and get a job at a SOC security operations center and you want to have some experience. Well, why don't we go and grab some free software and set it up inside of a, an environment and then play around with that software and practice using similar tools that we would in the workforce. These are the benefits of home labs. Now at, in my job as a, as a teacher at a college, I have contact with many, many hiring managers and a lot of them will say certs are good, but we, what we really want to talk about is people's home labs. What are they doing on their own time to, to show that they're interested in cyber? So that's, that's another reason that home labs are really valuable is because it gives you something to talk about during an interview uh, moment and say, hey, you know what? I really care about this material. Let's go and let's talk about this thing that I'm passionate about. I actually have a home lab set up for you that I'm gonna show you a little bit of it today. I'm envisioning that this video is gonna be a two-parter. First part is showing, talking about the benefits of setting up a home lab. And then the second part is like, I'm gonna go diving into some of the details uh, of the home lab that I've built here. So that maybe if you are if you want, you could do something similar. And it's, it's not the most complicated home lab situation by any means at all, okay? But what it is, is that it sets a foundation for you to add more complexity to it. A lot of people get into the trap of having a, a really hardcore home lab and they, they get all this stuff set up and then nothing's just, nothing works together. And they've, they've skipped an important step of creating a, a networking foundation that will allow for complex pieces to actually get added to the, the mix. Let's take a look at the home lab that I've got here. Like I said, it's pretty straightforward. We've got ourselves a router that has two local area networks. We've got a one on the left side here, and then we've got one on the right side here. And PFSense is the machine in the middle. Now, in this particular case, we've got a Kali machine that can communicate with a Debian machine that has SSH running. This is pretty straightforward. But what's nice about this particular setup is that it actually has some key things that I think are important for a lab environment. Let's do, what do we got? We have networking. We've got uh, network segmentation. We've got client server relationship. We've got access controls. The SSH server, we even have access controls on, this, on the, uh, the router here. Uh, we've got solid, get out of here. We've got solid firewall rules setups. Some machines can do go to the internet. Some machines cannot go to the internet. 
all of these things are really good, and they're they're imperative to the world of cybersecurity. We're also playing with uh, IPs and and learning about how to configure local area networks and giving them proper DHCP leases, giving them the proper DHCP pools, taking into consideration the the assets in the network that need to have static IP addresses. What's the difference between the static and the dynamic? Does this machine need dynamic? Does this need machine need static? All of these things are packaged into this quite simple uh, home lab environment. These are all things that you would consider when you are when you are building this this environment, and they are skills that you are practicing that you are going to use in the real world at, at your job. So while this lab is all virtualized, you should know that you can do labs on on anything really. But I've got like a, a bin of old routers. Is that would that be considered a home lab? Yeah, I, I believe so. If you if you if I think about all of the tasks that I can do in practicing exploiting those routers, uh, practice setting them up inside of a, of, a, of a different network. All of those things are practicing skills, and those, that's part of your home lab. It also takes a little bit of a brain switch to be like, actually, I'm doing something beneficial here. This is pushing me towards my goal of being in cybersecurity. This is part of my home lab. In this particular video, I want to focus on having like almost no money at all. And so what I'm going to go with is assuming that you've got no hardware at all. You're going to have hardcore hardware. I mean, I have a, I have a, a beefy server that I got for free <laughs> uh, because it was going to be thrown out. And I said, hey, wait a second. Can I have it? And they're like, well, if you're going to take it to the dump. And I said, I'm definitely taking it to the dump. And the dump is my lab, <laughs> which I just used it to practice on. Okay. You can do all these cool things in a virtualized space. You've heard it before. And on this channel, I've done a ton of virtualization videos using VirtualBox and VMware. I'm quite, quite a fan of using VirtualBox as my as my virtualization solution. Uh, I do have VMware, and I've got a couple videos about VMware on my channel. It really kind of depends on what you want to do. I recommend honestly getting practice using both of the solutions. They both have they both have benefits in in the business world, it kind of depends on where you're going to get a job. The key element of this virtual solution is that all you're doing is, is practicing sort of that operating systems, getting your, your head around that, practicing networking. Um, that's, the, that's the key part. How does, how does machine A talk to machine B, talk to machine C? I use that software. Another one that I use quite a bit, and I have a, a bunch of videos on this one, is pfSense. Now in this this one, this first part, I'm not going to go in and talk about setting up all the, the configurations within pfSense because that's I've got a lot of videos on that. Part two, I'll go a little bit more into detail, more probably more focusing on firewalls. Why do I like pfSense as a virtualization and home lab tool? It's because it's free and a lot of people put their hands on it and have have done good things with it. Also, you can do things like intrusion detection, snort, cerakata, intrusion prevention with both of those products. You can do solid firewalls. You know, the concept of firewalls and doing it good here applies to all of the firewalls, really. They just got different bows to make them look different. Complicated networks, you've got VLANs, you've got VPNs, you've got PF Blocker, which is super powerful. And the community is adding all of these new modules all the time that are that are great imagine you're going to a job interview and they say you know what 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 can you tell me about intrusion detection or intrusion prevention whatever and you say if you say nothing but i got a cert they'll say okay <laughs> i mean I've, I've literally been in meetings with people that have responded in that way uh, but you can say you know what i'm working on a cert on whatever but, you know, in my home lab, I've got this complicated networking situation where machine A has got a, a good firewall where it's allowed to do this, this, and this. And then in the middle, I've got a PFSense that allows for some traffic to get through, but it's going to alert on blah, 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 type of traffic. That's valuable because now you've, you're able to demonstrate or at least talk about 
a, a skill where you can, you can do something tangible. Uh, on my machine, I've got my laptop. I've got a Kali machine. I use Kali a, a ton. You know, you can use different ones, pair it, uh, and you can even make your own hacky hack type of, of a Linux machine if you really want. Uh, that's, that's fine. That's another lab idea. You know, like, I made a Windows machine into a hacking machine. Okay, <laughs> great. That's pretty cool. Thanks. Let's talk about it more. Uh, Kali comes with a lot of tools that are, like, packaged in already. So that's that's one of the things that I really like about it. It's also really easy to install. I like that as well. Uh, <clears throat> it's really good for offense. And then I, I have another machine here that's not as fancy. But it's a just a regular Debian machine. These were free. I just went to the internet, downloaded it, grabbed that grabbed that ISO, created a new instance, and even even the setting up of this machine from scratch is a demonstration of working inside of your home lab. It's it's awesome, and it it's very beneficial. Okay, so like <clears throat> what you can't see right now, and we're not going crazy into this, is that the machine Kali here is able to go from the LAN network into the OPT1 network, and then we can also do SSH as well. It's not crazy, <laughs> but there's a lot of pieces that are in play here to allow that to happen. Networking, firewalls, proper access controls on the SSH server itself, right? And then we could do other things too. Like I could, we could set up a web server on here to practice doing web attacks. Or better yet, why don't we set up a web server that is needing to be secured and practice creating an instance where it's, it's solid and is the probability of it being attacked is extremely low. Right? That's that's what we can do with a home lab. And that's what I'm trying to stress here inside of <clears throat> home labs in a virtualized environment. Now inside your home lab, you're actually gonna experience that the networking part is a huge part of it. And that's okay because the networking is really important. So it's actually a good idea to like spend a lot of time focusing on it. And I've got a ton of videos focusing on the the networking side of things. Uh, you know, I've got, we've got all kinds of networks that we can configure inside of our, our virtual box. Uh, VMware has a tremendous amount of stuff that we can set up inside of there. We've got NAT, internal networks, we've got host only, and all of these are special and unique and they play together in their own special ways. And the, the value of a home lab is that we can practice with these kinds of networks. Let's recap, let's recap what we've got here. Let's bring back our our topology here. Now, this is the a rudimentary home lab, but the the glory of the cyber home lab is that we can have what seems like a simple setup can have a lot of different pieces in it that are important for us to practice and learn. That's how skills are made is when we do things over and over and over again and it becomes sort of like second nature and we're we're good at at doing something. And so all of these things that we've listed here are important and they're part of the whole package. When you make your home lab, I encourage you to start with a simple one. And then once you've got it functioning and you're and you're happy, add complexity to it. Maybe inside your PF sensor, now you're going to add Suricata. Great. Does it? Does everything else work? Well, why not? Why don't we add something else? Maybe add PF blocker and block uh, certain country country zones. I mean, cool. That's well, that's awesome. Let's do it. Maybe you want to block, learn and practice how to block domains. Why not? Right. Just go nuts. Uh, it's all beneficial. If you are enjoying it and you are learning something then you are benefiting yourself. Hey, thanks for watching the video. I, I enjoyed doing it. We'll talk to you soon, and good luck on your home lab setup.